I think there's a lot of psychological resistance to serverless. And I was thinking about this, and, and, I, and I was thinking that like architecture is really is weird. Um, and it brings up a lot of weird issues, like do I feel secure in my environment? How do I feel about authority figures like Google and Amazon? How do I feel about commitment? Like all this stuff. And I, I think most like software architects should all have therapists. Um, they should be forced to have therapists by their, you know, their companies because it's, it's pretty deep stuff. Um, so, but what we see is like engineering managers in particular tend to be very conservative. Um, you know, we tend to be wary of something like this. Anything hyped kind of gets us feeling like critical and skeptical and negative. So that puts us on edge. There is an existential threat, or it feels like an existential threat to many people here, depending on what you do. Um, you know, serverless threatens to like obviate or change radically, at least the kind of career trajectory that you're on. And then there's a, the perception of control. So um, I spoke a lot with Mike Roberts um, before this talk, who wrote the serverless blog post on the Mark Fowler site, and now he runs a consulting company called Symphonia. And he, he says the number one reaction he gets from people is like, what are we giving up to do this? So it's not, what, what can I do? Like, what, what am I gaining? It's like, what am I giving up? And there's a bias towards control that we, we run into. Um, weirder resistances, and this is mostly stuff that maybe just goes through my head, but um, for a long time I had to overcome the idea that like, it's just not possible. Like, serverless is too good to be true. It's like the economist seeing $20 on the sidewalk and not picking it up because it's impossible for it to be lying there in a busy street. Um, then there's the idea of scientific reticence, and this is like, when you talk to the people who know the most, who are the smartest, they tend to be very rational and very balanced, and they're like, well, here's pros and there's cons. And this is the experience I have talking to some of my lead engineers. You know, It's good things and bad things, and here are the problems. And then I kind of say, like, but it's amazing, right? And they're like, yeah, it's amazing, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then there's the problem of the black hole of enterprise value. And I think like, if you're a startup or you're a SaaS company or you do anything involving infrastructure, if, you know, to the extent that serverless happens, a whole bunch of the value you're creating just went away. Like, you're not actually going to be able to do a better job managing the infrastructure for your SaaS platform than Amazon or Google. So what do you do? Do you just leverage their platforms? And then you're not doing very much anymore. You're, like, doing this much instead of this much. And, like, you're not going to get the valuation that you were looking for. So that seems like a problem. And then there's the leaky abstraction, the fun of leaky abstraction. So again, when you dangle something like serverless in front of smart engineers, the first thing they want to do is like find the leaks. They like want to find the leaks and poke holes in it, and like, and I do too. Like it's fun, but, but on the other hand, it kind of sets you on the wrong mindset sometimes. It's important, but but it's too it's too fun. So, so what is you know what is serverless not from an architectural perspective? Serverless is not functions. That's just one implementation. It's not events. Reactive computing is great, but that's not what we're talking about. I didn't say those two things. That was Oren Teich, who the, the uh, ex-GM of Heroku, who's now a product manager at Google for serverless stuff. Um, he said those things, so you can't argue with those, okay? Everything else you can argue with. Um, it's also not statelessness. That's not what this is about, and it's not about simple. Um, you hear a lot, serverless is okay for simple stuff, but for complex applications, it's not. Um, Actually, another guy that I spoke to, uh, Deepak Singh, who runs ECS at, at Amazon, said that he, he, call, he said, I call Lambda modern day Perl. And I kind of like that because I'm an old Perl person and I love Perl. But it sort of betrays a little bit of that mindset of like, okay, we can use serverless for like a little glue or like here and there or simple stuff. But I don't think there's any fundamental reason why that's so. Um, 